Why is it only, see this is racist. It's only focusing on your face. It doesn't even realize I'm here. I told like it only to focus on really pretty faces. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Let's go to an indie kid. Let's go to an indie okay. kid. Let's go Let's to an indie kid. Video games. Sometimes I second guess myself, David O'Reilly. Are you familiar with that? I, you second and triple guess yourself. Yeah. But you should trust yourself. You I know. You should always just trust and go, go with it. That's the lesson. Because it's always your instinct that's right. Everything is a game yeah. that I've been working on for uh, almost three years. It's a, a, a kind of a project that I've wanted to make for a long time. A big extension of my last game, Mountain, mm -hmm. which was a very kind of minimal, very slow experience type thing. I think it was the number one mountain simulator on iOS, right? Managed to get that. Actually, yeah. it was, this is not to brag, but it was the number one RPG for a whole week. I love I, it! Everything is essentially like a simulator of just nature uh, on a broader scale. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things obey like little rules. You know, you can describe all of this, the whole system of the universe, uh, with very few rules. And you can, and so games are like a perfect way of doing that, of making these little systems talk to each other. And you always get unexpected results. It's not serious, it's not a serious project. Uh, it is sincere. Like well, it's beautiful because you can go from being a little subatomic particle mm -hmm. all the way up to controlling a galaxy itself. Right. And you use a lot of like kind of silly humor in the beginning, I think, to get people into it and, uh -huh. and get people into a mood. But there really is like a lot of kind of depth to things that you can do. I was really su like surprised by it. There's a lot of kind of complexity in it that's there if you want it. Yeah. For sure. The passage of time, your scale, where you are in it, you can define all of that and just yeah. experiencing. And time is always going forward. And then uh, at a certain point in the game, it sort of starts becoming like this other thing, like this sort of sandbox sort of experience. You can like set up a building and do that and then have like animals live within it. Certain animals don't like each other and yeah. it starts being this like living organic sort of yeah. simulation. And initially you're kind of like, oh, it's silly how these animals are moving, and then you see them grouping together, and mm. you see how they want to be together, mm. and you see how the, the way they act around each other, and you start really seeing, like, beyond, I can make two street lights have little baby street lights, yes. which is hilarious, but then you start thinking about, like, oh, this is, this is a really cool way to show the relationship just between things. That's it. Yeah. That's basically it. And I think that that's what games are really good at. Um, I think, like, rela dynamic relationships or what's going on throughout nature, and you can't show them in any other medium in the same way. It's something special, man. I think people are really gonna love it. We're trying to do it right. Yeah, You're trying doing to make it. something special. I love you, David O'Reilly. Love you Have too. Have a good indie money. Erica, what'd you see in an indie cave that was neat? I ate a board game. I am now a knight of the Order of the Oven Mitt, <laughs> as you can see. Um, I ate my way to victory. Yes. We had we had uh, cookies and we had to eat them in a ritualistic fashion. So I saw this thing at EXO mm -hmm. in Portland last month and I didn't get to play it because it was so popular at EXO that they ran out of cookies. Yeah. Like there was no yeah. way to play it. I, it's, it's something really, really special. I'm sure the rules for uh, Knights of the Order of the Oven Mitt are gonna be out, so you should definitely play that. Eat your way to victory, just like I did. Eat your way to diabetes, my I've friend. I've been eating my way to victory my whole life. <laughs> So I'm here with Jillian Hello. from Threadsteading. Yes. This is said you made a Euro game that works on a sewing machine? Yes. Well an embroidery machine. So explain a little bit about how it works. Like how the game is played and also just how it works. Okay. <laughs> um, so the idea behind thread setting is that it's a territorial control game. Two rival commanders are scouting out and trying to stake their claim over territory as they move around the map. Um, and so players take turns deciding which direction to strike out. The machine embroiders their insignia on the map tiles that they're claiming as they go. Wow. And you're kind of trying to balance like getting as many tiles as you possibly can against not setting up your opponent to get even cooler points 
presents on the next turn. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's actually a pretty deeply strategic uh, yeah. game that's entirely born out of the constraints of the machine. So instead, like an embroidery machine would be like you would input a pattern. It would embroider you like a like a cap or like a patch or something. Right. You design what you want to embroider on your computer. You hit the embroider button. It sends the thing over to the embroidery machine. The machine embroiders it. So it basically okay. just thinks it's printing like tiny patches every turn. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. That's so cool. This is a standard Singer CE200 mm -hmm. Quantum Futura combination sewing and embroidery machine. Okay. A custom control panel on the front of the machine that's yeah. got the buttons. It's a Raspberry Pi. So it's like a $35 computer that's just like a circuit board. Um, so that controls all of the game logic and sends sewing signals to the embroidery control unit. Reverse engineered the communication protocol for the machine so that we can send our own signal. You know, when you win a game, it's ephemeral, right? Right. We, we love this idea of there being a permanent physical artifact in the world that's like a trace of the story of you playing this game. Yeah. Right, and you can actually go through and look at the, look at your play trace and say like, oh, I went that direction and you went that direction. And like, if only I had gone this direction instead. Yeah. Right? Like, and, and you can kind of look and, and have like a physical thing. It's almost like a, a response to virtual reality. Right? Yeah. Where like, everything in virtual reality is all about trying to make everything imaginary. Uh, and everything in digital fabrication is about like, make real concrete things in the world. And maybe 20 years from now, like, we'll have 3D printers that are super cheap and everyone will be making games for 3D printers and this is like the pre, pre-existing thing for now. No, Teddy. This isn't about that. Bye. <laughs> Sam, what are the good? What are the good games at an indie There was a dog barking at a woman that had tiger face paint on last night. Was that a video that game? Was, that was definitely a video game. <laughs> the dog knew it was playing a video game. You know, there was an awesome game called Botolo, and that is like a rad. Do you like fighting games? Have you heard of fighting games? It's like a. It's like a game where you have a, a person. It's like a world and heroes. Votolo is like a distilled fighting game. The graphics are incredible. It's almost like fabric, like layered fabric kind of thing, oh, like okay. Japanese style silk kind yeah. of designs. You like attack each other. It's like a you're fighting for zones. So you have to grab a ball and then hang out on the zone, and then you get and then you can like try to steal the ball, but you can like counter the steal, and you can counter the counter. Is this an esport? It is. Well, are yes. we esportsing? I think that video games are esports. I don't know about you. Video games are dogs and tiger masks and esports. And you are an esport. You're an esport too. Thanks. Thank you. I try. <laughs> The winner is Hyper Light Drifter. You won all of the Indicate. How does it, oh, how does it feel? The whole wait, thing. Wait, 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 we Windicate. We Windicate. Stop it. Don't yeah. make that a thing. Yes. You hosted awards so good. Oh, thank you. You did so good job. Ooh. Did you have fun? Yes, I did. Good. Yeah. It was so scary, but no, but it's over. <laughs> and no one's come for my head yet, so. And so there's nothing to be frightened of anymore. Nothing to be frightened of anymore. If they haven't come for your head yet, right. they never will. That's right. And right? if they do, you can just blame it all on Aaron's words. <laughs> because she wrote the thing. I could I could hear you in it. Yeah. Okay. I could definitely yeah, hear you in it. <laughs> it was good. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, IndieCade was fun. I loved IndieCade. You know, if you guys are familiar with me mostly from things like D News or Star Wars, you probably don't know that I got my start in the industry covering games. I started off on a channel called ByteJacker, and I'm putting new stuff on that channel starting today. It's going to be a place to cover games I love with people I love. It's just youtube.com slash bitejacker. Go over there, subscribe, give it a thumbs up and a comment on the new video, and let me know you came from my personal channel.